You're still watching Waze. Books have always been an integral part of our civilization and mankind's development. In earlier times, vellum or parchment was bound tightly with wooden cover and in order to use them to make books. Today, due to the upsurge in electronic devices that can be used to read news articles and stories, the traditional method of book reading is decreasing with time. Computers, tablets and most cell phones now provide the availability to read and e-books and tablets are fast becoming an alternative to hardcover books. Shakwe Martins is the best-selling author of the children's book The Greatest Animal in the Jungle. When she's not creating magical worlds um, with her stories, you can find her out and about in the city of Lagos where she has built a fantastic career in broadcasting. One day, if Shakwe has her wish granted, you just might find her in a book. Remember, you can join the conversation. Tweet to us at Plus TV Africa or Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Ways or SMS 0818 0384 Thank you so much for joining us, Shakwe. It's lovely to see you. Good evening, ladies. Great to be on the show. I know. <laughs> so, okay. books. Every time I think books, I think if I think back to when we met, I remember um, Smith FM and, and the book review. So you've mm. always been in my mind as the literary literature girl. And then you wrote a book. So I would like to know when we're talking about the reading culture, where did yours start? Oh, my goodness. Mine started as I'm guessing a lot of people's stories start with my parents, specifically with my mother, mm -hmm. because my mother herself as a child was an avid reader and it was something that she sought to foster in her children. Mm -hmm. So she was the person who had all the patience to take me to the libraries mm -hmm. um, and buy me books and sit down every time I ran up to her with a question, oh, mommy, what's this word? She I would, look it up. Mm. exactly. Well, first, before she got tired and told me to look it up, she would try and explain the word to me. Then yeah. she just gifted me a dictionary one day and said, well, here you go. <laughs> a dictionary. Teach a man to uh, Exactly. Um, and, and I guess that's what, uh, for me, when I think about reading, I think how it helps your vocabulary and, and just you being yeah. able to have a wide, broader Absolutely. array of words. Of but I have some audiobook lovers in the house, so take it away, Nasa. <laughs> I'm sorry, you, so you mentioned um, your mom taking you to the library. Mm. Nigeria or abroad? No. I want to say that. <laughs> yeah. Because it's part of the no, issues no, that we have. You just have to put Nigeria? No, oh, because no. it's part of the but issues you know that we have that That's reading culture true. in Nigeria is of totally course. diminished. Mm -hmm. It's part of it's the fact so that we don't have public libraries. Yeah. So I was wondering, that where did she... But no. you know what? Growing up, I remember coming to Nigeria and I remember going to libraries in yeah, Nigeria. Yeah, so you said that's changed. We did have so. that. Look, no. But now... now Definitely it's hard to find a few private libraries. Public it's library. really hard. It's so public hard. library. Like, I'm trying to study. Yeah, and I'm trying public to libraries. No private. No public I'm talking libraries. of public libraries. No, we don't. Public private. Where is the private? Even the private <laughs> one. Where's the even private to, one? Even no, we've got some libraries. Bookshop. Where about? Because libraries. I in, uh, the I library. The only one I know. Yaba. Yeah, I know the one in library in Lekki because I remember they contacted me. Yes, with the reading space. Space in Lekki. I don't know if there's still no, the reading one I know but is the Terra Culture one. And no, then no, no, there's one in Lekki. Oh, oh really? That's okay, so and that saves how many people? One library to how many people? <laughs> Which right, they Nasa. do exist. Almost non existent. <laughs> So it's interesting that we talk about libraries because I was mm. going to come to that. But yeah. let's go back to what Uti mentioned, audiobooks. So this year I um, discovered audiobooks. So I never thought that audiobooks was a thing. I didn't even think that, you know, it would be as effective as actually reading. And when someone introduced me to it, it's like, wow, I can read 100 books in a year. Where, you know, the year before I could only read probably one book and I would get... So my attention span is like very short and I'm very impatient. So. I'm not the kind of person that would go through a whole book and into, and I used to do that when I was younger, so I don't know what happened to me. So if life. it's, is this, yes, maybe life, living in Nigeria, <laughs> the socioeconomic yeah. social problems. No time to read, um, yeah, it's too hard. I found that my reading culture was, stemmed a lot, particularly in the UK, you, you're riding on the tube, you're riding mm -hmm. on the bus, you just read book after book after yeah. book. But in Nigeria, you come you down to have at the train eyes. station, you see WH Smith and you walk right into it. So that, do you understand? It's the atmosphere is appealing. It is absolutely. So you're saying well, that yeah. you keep going. It's Nigeria is the problem, basically. Yes, it's, it is a but, problem. But I don't think so because I think that books have always been available in Nigeria. Books have always been affordable in Nigeria because we have a huge secondhand book market, and I think that I mean affordable um, to who though. 
I was going no, to say that. No, I think that, that in general, they've, they've, that's they've, sub, that's it's, it's relative. It's subjective. Yeah. Yes. That okay. is yeah, subjective. I'll, I'll accept that. That's but part of the because problem. Because I have to say, yeah. although books are available and somewhat accessible, mm -hmm. life is not it here, yeah, that's true. And let's okay, let's localize it to Lagos. Uh -huh. Yeah, is not conducive to mm -hmm. reading. To reading, that's, sure. that's, that's my I'm point. I'm the biggest advocate of reading that's because true. I think that reading, especially from an early age, mm -hmm. fosters um, it's fosters empathy. Mm -hmm. It teaches people how to expand their minds, yeah. their horizons, their horizons, their imagination. Yeah. Imagine. Why, why empathy though? How? When you're oh, reading when you're, and you're no, 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 another no, no. person's problem yeah. and how they are solving it mm -hmm. and what they think, mm -hmm. you are given a direct access to the way and uh, to another kind of thinking. So you are forced, in a sense, mm. to realize that yours is not because human beings. Yeah, we approach the world from a self-centered perspective. It True. is the way we are. Yeah, but with reading. You get to see that there are other people in the world who would approach That's the true. same problem right. with a different angle. So without having to travel to another country, you can actually you're exposed to other exactly. people. And to say that something else, sense. sometimes when you're reading, you put yourself in those shoes of the person. Do you understand? Yeah, I know. So I do that. So that's why I put it on that person's for me. Like, and you feel that reading. you feel the emotion, you yes. feel overwhelmed, yes. you feel joy, yes. you feel sadness. Yeah. So I mean, uh, reading culture for me, I agree with you. So there are factors here mm -hmm. that. But do you remember when we were growing up? Yes. And Famous this was exactly K. so we all went through <laughs> a process. You started from Secret Seven, Famous Five, all the Enid Blyton books. Oh my goodness. You went into secondary school, Mills and Boons. You went into Sweet Valley University. Mills and Boons. You went to Sweet Valley High, Sweet Valley University, then Mills and Boons. And then Silhouette in America with all those books. Sweet Valley High, in fact, I'm as well. And those things shaped. Our That's culture, true. it shaped our perspectives. But sure. when I think about kids today, What's we that? had to wait till four o'clock or five o'clock for TV. for TV. That's true. We didn't have alternative power sources as much as there are now. So, mm. I, I, funny enough, I saw a video this morning of a friend's son, and he was still in his pajamas, and he was telling his dad off. Dad, I went to the TV, Wi-Fi not working. Netflix not working. But that's YouTube my reality. YouTube not working. That's my reality. YouTube kids not working. <laughs> my daughter so is three. Yes, she does seven, that. Yeah. These kids now have access to other media. So how do we, because you know, when we're talking about reviving this culture, the reality is we acknowledge that reading books is almost becoming extinct. Mm -hmm. I personally like the feel and the smell of paper. It takes me back to the story. And, and so I'm still a, paper, uh, a paperback paper person. Back, yeah. But I, I understand the value of, of audiobooks. I still tune out, so I'm trying to get there. But you've written a children's book. Mm. So clearly you see that there is a way in which we can keep children engaged. So what motivated you to write that? Is, is that culture part of it? Definitely looking at, okay, so actually the conversation that yeah. we just had yeah. is what motivated me to write a book uh -huh. and to continue writing. <laughs> because when we're talking about reading as children, we're talking about Enid Blyton. We're talking about <laughs> Sweet Valley High, Sweet Valley University. And there's no Nigerian. Where's Nigeria and mm, all of that? Like. Where are the people like us and all of that? Because I remember growing up and reading uh, The Famous Five and thinking, oh my goodness, let me go and have a picnic with some ginger ale. I know, and then when we know, <laughs> so let me bring the Nigerian context. Where is Shandy and <laughs> we <laughs> read Simbi and Ali? Yes. No, no, the drama <laughs> boy. And that Aki, went to Aki the drama boy. That was yeah. a very sad story for me. In fact, I used to cry. So, in truth, talking about books and empathy, mm. I remember that was such a sad story. Yeah. There were so many of those kind of books as well. And so maybe that's what, that was the problem. Nigerian books were so real and so, so really close to home. And we always like. Yeah, then another so, issue that I see is a noise culture. Don't you, okay. think, don't you think it's an issue? It's an integral part of our society. There is noise everywhere. Do you think it will help children who actually have that interest to read? Do you think it will propel them to read or will it impede them? Okay, so what I would say to that is human beings have the have resilience mm -hmm. and the greatest capacity to normalize any situation. So even if there is noise, trust me, I have just gone, I've, I moved recently, and I moved from a place where there was so much noise, I filtered it out. So I used to think it was quiet, and people yeah. would tell me, oh my goodness, where you are is so noisy. Couldn't hear okay, it. Okay, Shopper, let me bring it down. A lot of people live in high density areas. Yes. 
how the children in mm. that area, how, how but, do they but survive? But isn't that the beauty of a book, though? Because I used to remember like getting tune. lost in books. Yeah. I would be like literally scrunched up in a little corner. And you just And I've moved. My imagination exactly. is gone. I'm completely out of here. But yeah. what I'm saying is, so we're there's some reading. children, okay. Nasa, there's some children that live in a one-room apartment with their parents. Let me hear the thing. How do you think that would encourage them to read? But there are also spaces that cater to children who want to read. Where? We have children from such backgrounds. Well, you know they what, can go there. They are accessible. They so don't need to buy the books. They can actually read where? in those I spaces. I really need to know the book. Where are those? Um, <laughs> oh, has she moved? I, I remember the Bookworm Cafe is there. Um, Did you hear what I said? Chopin. Chopin. I'm just talking about But I think what Lamy is, I think what is more key to what you are pointing out is more the fact that children do what they see their parents doing. Yes. So do mm. parents still even have the time to read? No, so I'm not even, I'm I'm not even way, talking. Can I say it's we a valid also point. have mobile libraries because I know the iRead network is there. Mm -hmm. So um, this is a lady who has who goes to these areas that mm -hmm. you're talking about mm -hmm. and caters to these children that you're talking about and gives them books and has accessible, affordable, well, oh, it's all relative, but we, we can get, they can get books for 200 naira. Mm. Well, you know, so, okay. so we'll I didn't know about back. that. Let, so let's we have a quick different break. Okay. Let's take spaces. a quick break. Uh, we have to pay some bills and we'll be right back. Stay with us.